Kathy Clay and I work in the library and I'm going to tell you where I was on 9-11 because it was a very powerful personal experience for me. My across the street neighbors are the Hogans and Cole Hogan was the only Macon victim in 9-11 and he was at the Pentagon and he was a soldier of soldiers from what I hear. He was a Green Beret, a um, special force guy who had been all over the world. So at the time, his parents really lived across the street. He didn't, but he grew up over there. But anyway, so at the time, I, I really didn't know where Cole Hogan was in the world because he had such an active, fun, or special life with armed services. So on 9-11, I was on the phone actually with a friend trying to get a carpool for one of my girls to, for a soccer match that night at Stratford. And she said, Kathy, turn on the TV. And at that time, they didn't have 24-hour news and all that. So they said, turn on the TV, and they showed the towers. And so I saw the first tower go down. And then, uh, obviously, everybody was glued to the TV. And then they showed the Pentagon, where a large airplane hit directly the Pentagon. Still didn't know. At that time, they weren't reporting as many loss of lives. And then the second tower fell. Anyway, Jane Hogan, Cole Hogan's mother, walked across the street probably after, I, I believe it was probably about one or two in the afternoon, so this had taken place early, like at nine o'clock. So she came over and she did not want to tie up her phone because she had not heard from Cole. And that was very unusual because she said he would have immediately called her and said everything was okay. And I knew what type of person Cole was, so I said, well, he's probably helping people and is so busy and he's gonna get in touch with you. Well, being a mother, she deep down knew that was not probably going to be the case. So anyway, after it was reported that he had died, it was uh, he had, had he was in the office. He was a general's aide at the Pentagon at the time, and that was uh, kind of a promotion in the um, for him in his military life. So how safe she worried about him all over the world, but how safe did she feel that he was at the Pentagon? But his office was a direct hit. He was a general's aide, so he was always by the general's side. And the general was downstairs and was not harmed, so they were really hoping that Cole had been with him, but he was not. He was in the office. So Cole was um, given a full military honor burial in Arlington Cemetery, and now on 9-11, it is uh, it's actually my husband and I's anniversary, but we will always continue to honor Cole's name. On our street, there is a big rock with a memorial and flags on Overlook Avenue that our neighbors put together in his honor. And it was, um, the, one of my last memories was going to that soccer game that I told you about for the carpool. And we went, you know, life goes on, we went to the soccer game, but Stratford campus was like silent. Everybody was walking into the game just not knowing what the future held. You could hear airplanes going to Warner Robins just constantly. So anyway, the national anthem started and everybody just stopped still in their tracks. I, I'll, I'll get goosebumps thinking about it. No matter where they were, it wasn't like people were trying to get their last minute ticket or they just stopped right where they, they were, hand over their heart and sang the national anthem. And it was a beautiful experience and a ter terrible time. On 9-11, I was at Stratford Academy, and I was in a meeting with the administrators and headmaster, uh, who was Edward England at the time, and they knocked on the door of our meeting and was telling us that there was a tragedy in the United States, and they didn't, um, they actually knocked on the door after the plane uh, crashed. So it was a, sort of an unreal feeling uh, to think like, something like this could have happened and we went and found a TV and listened to the news and then I went around and told the teachers. Um, it was the first year I was principal at Stratford and I went around and told the teachers of the tragedy that had happened in our United States and I won't ever forget it. So 9-11, uh, I was actually working in Laramie, Wyoming, which is the home of the University of Wyoming. I was coaching soccer at the university and uh, I had just called my father because it's his birthday uh, and I had just spoken with him and at that time of the day um, in Laramie it's two hours behind the East Coast so uh, I was having breakfast uh, drinking a cup of tea and as my routine was in those days I was watching the news at the time 
And so I remember the news cutting to the Twin Towers, uh, the World Trade Center, and uh, there was obviously smoke coming out because the first plane had hit. So uh, I watched for, for quite some time uh, before going into work. And for me, work was maybe a three or four minute uh, ride into work. Um, when I got to work, there was basically with nobody in the offices, they were all in the uh, television room watching the news. Uh, and we all saw the second plane hit the second tower. Um, and it was uh, obviously very memorable. It's one of those days that you remember what you were doing, uh, remember it vividly. So um, that was where I was.